we as East Coast are glad to host you. We'd like to recognize all the countries represented. We also wish to recognize all the maritime institutions, port authorities, maritime education training institutions, shipping and logistics, and uh, all private sector associations as well. My name is Mwanaulu Issa. I am the Director of Trade Facilitation um, and Policy Harmonization for Moesna. I will be your host for the day. We'll start off the program by inviting our chair, Honorable Frank Moseba Tayali, Minister of Transport and Logistics of the Republic of Zambia, to uh, make his welcome remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Director of Program. Allow me to rely on the protocols that have already well been established. I bring to you warm fraternal greetings from the government and the people of Zambia. Allow me as chair of this organization to welcome you all to this esteemed gathering of ministers and stakeholders of the maritime subsector drawn mainly from the eastern, southern, northern Africa and the Indian Ocean states. Let me take this opportunity to thank the host, Kenya, for the warm reception and all the pleasantries and protocols accorded to us since our arrival here in this beautiful city of Nairobi. I would also take this opportunity to thank Uganda for leading this organization over the past two years and the milestones achieved in transforming the maritime agenda. Allow me also to thank the Secretariat of the Maritime Organization for Eastern, Southern, and Northern Africa for organizing this meeting. Kindly permit me, in a special way, to express my gratitude and pay tribute to our host minister, Honorable Salim Mvraya, for welcoming us here and making us feel at home. Asante Nisana. Honorable ministers, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, the universality of maritime challenges facing regional states, our aspirations, and the changing global shipping and maritime industry, there is an increasing need for collaboration by our regional states. In order to strategize, for the development of the African maritime economy, we need to develop harmonized policies, practices, and adopt common standards. You are all aware, honorable delegates, that water transport is responsible for moving over 80% of international trade, with Africa currently accounting for more than 10% of the global trade moved by sea. For us, for us as Africa, these volumes are unfortunately transported almost exclusively by multinational carriers domiciled outside Africa. This leaves our continent, this leaves our continent exposed to the mercy of foreign players, dictating the terms and conditions of courage Hence the need for regional collaboration and building unified and common ways of conducting our maritime affairs. Honorable ministers, distinguished invited guests, if we as African states cannot start a conversation now on how we can have more control in the transportation of our cargo, posterity 
who judges harshly. You may be aware that not many Africans own sea vessels. This situation does not help us as a region at all. Owning our own vessels can assist, can assist us to support each other in maritime transportation. We need to rise above the, this challenge and bring ourselves to a point where we can learn from each other instead of every state acting by itself. Ladies and gentlemen, Moesna comes with an immense opportunities, especially in facilitating structured engagements amongst us, driving regional maritime programs and putting a framework for pooling our, of resources, ideas, and numbers together for the required interventions in this critical sector. Dear delegates, many of the member states belong to transport corridors that facilitate the movement of cargo. Yet, yet, the same attention has not been paid to the maritime sector, despite the enormous potential that the maritime sector has to offer. As African states, we continue to lose enormous resources due to the disjointed and uncoordinated approaches, yet our aspirations are similar and our challenges essentially the same. We have opened up the organization's membership and rebrand into the maritime organization for Eastern, Southern, and Northern Africa, Moesna, by championing inclusivity. As Moesna, we are sending a message to the region and Africa that the organization belongs to all of us and we need to embrace it as one of the avenues for the possible transformation of the maritime sector. Therefore, there is every need, there is every need for a regional maritime organization to spearhead the promotion of Africa's intra and international trade. Honorable distinguished guests, honorable ministers, ladies and gentlemen, in support of the agenda for greater collaboration, in September of 2022, the Democratic Republic of the Congo joined this organization to become the fifth member state. In this respect, we urge the DRC to complete their internal processes for the ratification of their membership. Further, we were also privileged this year to receive Ethiopia's application to join the membership of this organization. During our ninth session of the Assembly of Ministers, which convened yesterday, the 26th of June, 2024, Ethiopia was admitted as our sixth member state. A big hand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Honorable ministers, allow me in a special way to congratulate the Federal Republic of Ethiopia over their admittance to the membership of this esteemed organization and to welcome the Honorable Minister, Dr. Ale Musime, into the Assembly of Ministers for Moesna. <laughs> Ethiopia's membership to Moesna brings knowledge and experience of a land-linked country that has, a, that has its own shipping vessels. In this regard, we also look forward to learn from Ethiopia's experience in aviation and the maritime subsectors. Honorable ministers, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, your presence here, despite your very busy schedules, is testimony to your commitment to the agenda of collaboration and charting the way forward towards uh, together as African states. As deliberated this morning during the regional session of ministers, we are pleased to note that your governments are at various levels of formalizing your membership to this organization. There is huge potential that the African maritime sector can play in our regional economic development. I wish to make a passionate appeal to you, honorable ministers, and country representatives 
to prioritize the Moesna membership with your respective governments. Honorable ministers, ladies and gentlemen, land-linked states rely heavily on coastal nations who manage the maritime gateways for cargo. Although the right to access the sea may be guaranteed by international law, they still suffer increased costs due to non-tariff barriers. I urge member states to use our strength in numbers to mitigate the rising shipping costs in addition to our collective bargaining power for favorable trade instruments with partners abroad. Honorable ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Africa needs to encourage trade among African countries by developing transport infrastructure that will make all of us better connected to each other. With this objective, with this objective, maritime connectivity will also become paramount for Africa. Concurrently, Africa should own its own vessels to facilitate movement of goods across the regional ports. Honorable delegates, I assured colleagues during our previous sessions that as Zambia, we shall continue supporting the ideals of this organization and all meaningful initiatives of collaboration. This is in line with the directive by His Excellency Mr. Kainde Ichilema, President of the Republic of Zambia, to enhance regional collaboration and formulate partnerships as a means to unlocking trade opportunities not only for Zambia, but the region and the continent at large. Distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I commend the Secretariat for their advisory role on the domestication of marine cargo insurance that will result in the retention of over $62 million annually otherwise spent on foreign insurance firms. As of now, the task force comprising technocrats from the industry are putting final touches to the full implementation of local marine cargo insurance. We also note that the organization has recently developed a regional maritime transport policy for member states which should assist to harmonize our practices and policies and inspire action for the many challenges being faced. At this juncture, allow me to pay gratitude to the 20 states in the region who participated in the formulation of this policy, which is in line with the strategic direction and aspirations of our organization. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I wish to thank Kenya for hosting us today, and I look forward to fruitful deliberations. Lastly, may I pay glowing tribute to Moesna Secretariat for organizing this assembly. Asanteni sana, merci beaucoup, thank you very much, muito obrigado.
Uh, thank you so much, choir. Can we have the cultural troupe and then we proceed with the rest of the program? We are going to perform a contemporary music called a medley of contemporary music touching base on African uh, uh, artists um, uh, throughout uh, uh, Africa, uh, that is. We have musics from uh, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, uh, DRC, uh, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and so on and so forth. Enjoy the music. Then are you in truth in one month? One week, you sing a new song in two days. Unless you're done, you will hear congratulations. You're a sin the glory of God. Congratulations, He has done it for you. And you will come back with a new song to sing. God is good. Yes, you will come again with a new song of praise. That song is from Uganda, our neighboring country. Uh, Uganda, our Koapi. The song is done by Winnie Mwangi. Black Market Records. Kenya from one of our 
local artist. Very fresh song, well known. Aya wa neighbors from Tanzania. Tanzania, hoi. Karibu karibu sana Kenya. That song from uh, Tanzania. The local artist is called uh, Saida Karoli. Yeah, it's a collaboration with uh, Diamond Platinum. Aya wale wenye tuko na miaka hamsini pale Aya, this is Lingala Lingala kutoka DRC Say don't try this at home, huh? When you are 60 years. Wow, thank you so much, Rambolo dancers. Thank you so much. I would now like to welcome our host minister, Honorable Salim Mvuria, Minister of Mining, Blue Economy and Maritime Affairs, Republic of Kenya, to make his remarks. A round of applause, please. Uh, thank you very much. Um, our Chair, uh, His Excellency Frank Museba Tayali, the Chair of uh, Moesna, our outgoing Chair, uh, General who has been chairing Ixos, His Excellency uh, General Minister of Public Works from Uganda, uh, Honorable Ministers from Member States, Ladies and gentlemen, senior officials, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for the entertainment. I think that was uh, great. And I want to request that we give them a better round of applause. Uh, the one from DRC, I think the dancing moves, don't try at home. <laughs> Uh, it is indeed uh, our great honor and privilege for me to address you here today of this uh, meeting of ministers responsible for shipping and maritime. Uh, and now that we have been able to transit from Ixos to Moesna, uh, this is a great privilege. I take this opportunity to extend a warm welcome on behalf of His Excellency Dr. William Samoy Ruto, uh, President of the Republic of Kenya, who acknowledges this gathering and offers blessings and welcomes you all to Kenya. Distinguished delegates attending this important meeting as we gather here today, we recognize the significance of our collective efforts in shaping the future of our continent, our shared commitment uh, to collaborate, innovate, and progress underscores the need for a unified approach in this particular endeavor. Kenya is honored to host this historic assembly, symbolizing the revitalization of Moesna based on the visionary ideals of our founding leaders to unify the shipping and maritime interests of member states under the theme of this meeting, charting the course together for sustainable shipping and economic uh, prosperity is of paramount importance to all of us gathered here today. We bear the responsibility as stewards of this vital industry to pave path that ensures a sustainable and prosperous future for generations to come. Achieving sustainable maritime future requires unprecedented regional cooperation and innovation. We must therefore work together 
to leverage on our collective expertise, resources, and technology as no single nation can address these challenges in isolation. We are aware that shipping is the, lively, uh, the lifeblood of global trade, facilitating 90% of international trade through transportation of goods and resources. However, this essential industry also significantly contributes to environmental challenges, including greenhouse gas emissions, marine pollution, and the de depletion of marine biodiversity. And also as the minister here in charge of blue economy, I want to say that uh, one of the key challenges is climate change. And we have seen this practically through rising oceans, the rising waters in the ocean, rising waters in lakes, rising waters also in the other blue space. We have also experienced uh, rivers that have changed the course and therefore our deliberations should also consider this uh, urgent uh, action on matters climate change. Today our oceans which cover more than 70% of the earth's surface are under threat and therefore as we discuss shipping and maritime inspiration of our economy, we need in our plan to be very categorical on how we are going to inculcate planning that is going also to deal with the matters climate change. Building a sustainable maritime future for members also means that we need to up our game on matters education and information so that as we upgrade our infrastructure in maritime, we equally also look at how do we upgrade our human resource so that we can have a requisite resource that can be able to inspire the economy. In this regard, the government of Kenya is putting forward a lot of effort and resources to ensure that we upgrade our maritime institutions. Uh, here in Kenya, we have Bandari Maritime Academy and we have put a lot of resources to make sure that we upgrade our education and maritime a human resource and more particularly I'm calling on this assembly to also consider matters that are going to have mutual recognition of certificates among member states so that we can mar we can harmonize maritime education and uh, and enhance the uptake of maritime and shipping courses among our young professionals I once again want to take this opportunity to thank Moes Moesna for hosting the regional forum on maritime education last year that brought together seven countries in the region uh, on cooperation and maritime training uh, issues. Infrastructure development is very critical and even as we talk about maritime and shipping, the global agenda in the AU is to make sure that we connect Africa. In this regard, Kenya has made significant investments in this regard, both in terms of the seaport and also in uh, Lake Victoria, uh, which we share with Uganda and Tanzania. In the ocean, we've been able to make a connection between Lamu port and our neighboring countries, South Sudan and Ethiopia, so that we can have a continuous flow of goods and services that are going to support economies of the region. Uh, currently in Lamport, we are working with a capacity of 1.2 million TUs, and this is an ongoing project which the government of Kenya continuously puts in resources to make sure that we leverage on our capacity within the ocean and connect to the infrastructure. The increased integration of member states will be very useful because as Africa, we need also to inspire our own markets. And because we already have instruments, the, inter, inter, the Africa continental free trade area, the Comesa, we can leverage on these opportunities to make sure that shipping and maritime become uh, an easy facilitator for trade among the regions. 
In this regard also, we are looking at the entire uh, subsector in shipping to be able to inspire the economies of our region. And in this regard, the government of Kenya is working with the Kenya shipyard. And already we have two vessels, MV Uhuru 1 and MV Uhuru 2 in Lake Victoria that is now transporting cargo to our neighbors in Uganda and Tanzania. Uh, however, in that regard, we also want to enhance the capacity of the shipyard to be able to build more vessels. Uh, right now, we are piloting uh, the uh, building of uh, local boats, which is ongoing. And we want also to do more so that we stop the importation of vessels from outside the country. Indeed, it's a reflection of our own commitment to harness available resources and talents in the region to be able to work around the entire sector of the blue economy. And Kenya cannot do this alone, and that is why we really support the idea of having a regional shipping line so that we can leverage on our opportunities, we can leverage on our, our neighbor, neighborhoodness to make sure that we, we develop a cabotage regime that is going to allow also uh, shipping lines within the countries uh, that are represented here. We also need to work on harmonization of other parameters and other instruments that are going to help us to have common standards as we engage on matters uh, shipping. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the government of Kenya has already uh, moved ahead to ensure that we have now changed for most of our cargo in hot culture. We also do shipping through the port of Mombasa, uh, and this has really opened uh, a lot of business to our neighbors uh, to that transport hot culture products uh, in the EU. So in addition to uh, our meeting here, as Africa, we also need to find space to influence uh, other uh, countries internationally. And in that regard, Kenya is a, a Category C member of the International Maritime Organization. And that has given us an opportunity to profile our country uh, to domesticate most of the conventions so that we can continue uh, to uh, enjoy the benefits of that uh, membership. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to uh, have a long speech, but I want to say that as Kenya, we are very much committed to this organization, and we are looking forward that more countries join this organization so that we can be a formidable force uh, to reckon with in the shipping and maritime uh, business. With those many remarks, I want to thank you most sincerely and also to thank our outgoing chair who has been able to steer this organization to greater heights and we, co we commit to give a lot of support to the new chair. Actually, the first chair of Moesna uh, is not the new chair, it's the first chair of Moesna and therefore we will give you a lot of support uh, and we commit to ensure that we implement resolutions uh, of this organization. With this, those many remarks, thank you very much and welcome to Kenya. Karibuni sana. Uh, apart from, you know, the busy schedule here, you are also welcome to sample our diversity in culture, our diversity in uh, tourism products, uh, so you can even come back again but even here you can extend your stay so that you can enjoy the beauty of our country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much our host minister, Honorable Salim Vuria. Uh, as for the program, we are um, we needed to do the introduction of our Honorable Ministers uh, by our Chair. So, Chair, if uh, my, I may beg your indulgence, we need to have our Ministers introduced to the Assembly.
Thank you very much. Um, very quickly, allow me to introduce uh, the Honorable Minister for Mining. Well, this is my brother who has just left. No need for introducing the local one. <laughs> he needs no introduction. He's at home. So I'll proceed to introducing the Honorable General Edward Katumba Wamala. This is the Minister of Works and Transport of the Republic of Uganda. Let me go further. His Excellency Dr. Ale Musime, Minister of Transport and Logistics of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. His Excellency Bernard Kibesi, Ambassador, Embassy of the United Republic of Tanzania to Kenya. Honorable Selemusa uh, Ndwandwe, Minister of Public Works and Transport of the Kingdom of Eswatini. His Excellency the Dejax Antoni, Minister for Transport of the Republic of Seychelles. <laughs> Honorable Mohammed Abdullah Kadi Mohammed, State Minister of Ports and Maritime Minis Transport of the Federal Government of Somalia. <laughs> Honorable Engineer David Nzandu, Deputy Minister, Minister of Transport and Public Works of the Republic of Malawi. <laughs> Mr. Nekundi Veiko, Deputy Minister, Minister of Works and Transport, Republic of Namibia. <laughs> Ms. Mary Akech. Tabin Mila, Deputy Minister, Minister of Transport, Republic of South Sudan. <laughs> Mr. Johannes Simako, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Transport, Ministry of Transport and Public Works of the Republic of Botswana. <laughs> Ms. Nini Hanswe Godelivi, Representative Honor, representing Honorable Mar Marie Chantel. Jimbere, Minister of Trade, Transport, Industry and Tourism, Republic of Burundi. <laughs> Mr. Mohammed Said Dalane, representing Minister of Minister Biamfiri Tamidi, Minister of Maritime and Air Transport of Union of Comoros. <laughs> Mr. Ali Mira Kemei, representing Honorable Hassan. H. Ibrahim, Minister of Equipment and Transport, Republic of Djibouti. <laughs> Mr. Mustafa Anait Anat Sisa Polino, representing His Excellency Matthias Magala, Minister of Transport and Communications of the Republic of Mozambique. Mr. Daniel Mwanza Kiange, Secretary General, Maritime Organization for Eastern, Southern, and Northern Africa, <laughs> including the Indian Ocean States. Asante San. Sincere apologies. Uh, we have Madam representing Minister from South Sudan. The name again? Sorry? Oh, okay. Oh, I did. Eh? So that was the director of program trying to confuse me. <laughs> the gender issues, eh? Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, I would now like to call upon our Secretary General to give his remarks. A round of applause, thank you. Chair of Moesena, uh, or Mr. Frank Musabatayali, uh, the outgoing chair of East Coast, now transforming to Moesena, uh, General Katumba Malwa. You should not wonder why I'm recognizing the outgoing chair, because his efforts has led us to where we are. 
uh, honorable ministers present, uh, CEOs present, my colleagues, captains of the industry, uh, my colleagues, East Coast staff, all invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, kindly allow me to ride on the existing protocols and proceed from there. First and foremost, I want to take this opportunity to sincerely thank the creator of the universe, our God, who has enabled us to be here today because it's not our own making. Where we are is because there's a power in heaven that is controlling our movements. Equally, I want to appreciate the government of Kenya, represented here by Honorable C.S. Mfuria, Sal Mfuria, for being a wonderful host to this uh, assembly. I believe since we arrived here, we have been taken care of and we continue to be taken care of by the good government led by Excellency President William Ruto, represented here by the chair, by Mr. Mfuria CS, Mining, Blue Economy and Maritime Affairs. I also want on a very special note to acknowledge your presence, all of you, for honoring our invitation and being part of this gathering. Honorable ministers, ladies and gentlemen, as it has been said, 80 to 90 percent of international trade is conducted over the waters. And therefore, the saying that whoever controls the waters controls the world economy. As Africa, we are somehow disadvantaged when it comes to the control of the waters. Statistics indicate that in 2023, over 11 billion tons of cargo was transported globally by ships and shipping lines operating in the world. Out of this, 1.3 billion tons were transported in and out of Africa, costing the African economy close to over $20 billion. And this money could have retained in Africa to circulate and create business opportunities build our economies if we as Africa had a control over our waters in terms of shipping and maritime. And because of that, as an organization, previously East Coast, now Maesna, we have been pushing and advocating for Africa to take control of their waters in terms of transportation of goods. We continue with that drive as Moesna to push and to call all of us to work together so that we can get at least, if not the 20 billion paid out of Africa, a half of that money. I believe it's something that can assist this continent. Therefore, distinguished guests, when you see honorable ministers seated in front here, this symbolizes the desire of the region to work together so that we can take control of what we are losing as a continent. And the honorable ministers, once more, I want to thank you sincerely appreciate you for honoring our invitation, coming to be part of this conversation. I believe with your presence here, Moesina, the Eastern region, Eastern, 
eastern, southern, and northern region of Africa is going to speak in one voice, and we are going to take control of our oceans. Ladies and gentlemen, our ministers, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, you may recall that a few months ago, we were in Nairobi in a workshop that brought more than 20 countries from the region to discuss and deliberate on the subject of the regional maritime transport policy. This document is expected to achieve, among others, the following. Promote and strength, strengthen existing collaborative mechanism as a cornerstone to the industry growth through transparent communication, coordinated decision making, harmonization of policies to effectively address regional sector challenges, ensure effective implementation of international maritime conventions towards fulfillment of member states' obligations as flags and port states, provide guidance in the development of national maritime transport policies and le legislations and help in the implementation of sub-sector plans and activities in a collaborative manner regionally, promote local shipping, ship ownership, development and implement flexible regional maritime cabotage regimes aimed at enhancing intra-regional maritime trade, encourage and promote private sector-led initiative in the shipping and maritime industry and sustainable exploitation of the regional blue economy, provide and encourage joint financial resource mobilization for regional programs like infrastructure development and shipping operation, provide guidelines in conducting safe, secure, and environmentally sustainable shipping activities in the region that means globally acceptable standards, guide and promote development of robust shipping and maritime industry, human resource and advancement programs with the vision of becoming a global basket which will, with, with, with world trained and skilled seafarers and industry practitioners, encourage development and adoption of advanced technology in the shipping and maritime industry to ensure regional competitiveness, contribute to coherent and coordinated approach in resolving shipping and maritime issues and ensure sustainable development of the sector and that facilitate implementation of the relevant sustainable development goals at the country level. Ladies and gentlemen, the draft policy is ready and will be availed to honorable ministers for further review and guidance. of equal importance in our programs as Moesna is formation of a regional shippers council. It is important to note that every shipping transaction starts and ends with a shipper that is the importer and exporter. The well-being of a shipper is therefore important for the success of the industry. Shippers' councils are therefore meant to promote and protect the interest of the shipper. Historically, creation of well-organized shippers' councils is closely tied to the existence of liner conference 
that shipping lines that used to monopolize trade routes, uh, set common freight rates for given routes, fix sailing frequencies, and determine the general condition of carriage without any regard to the shipper. This, therefore, prepared people to start uniting and forming shippers' councils or associations to provide them with collective bargaining power needed to counter liner conferences in determining rates, selling frequencies, and general conditions of service. The third session of United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, ANCTAD, in 1972, called for the creation of shippers' councils organizations on the principle that liner conferences would consult with shippers' council organizations and governments concerned, including those in the land-linked countries, before taking decisions that affect the cost of freight. The revised African Maritime Transport Charter 2010 requires party states to support creation and sustainable sustainability of shippers' councils and is and therefore in that spirit the predecessor of Moesna that uh, uh, that is East Coast, formed the shippers' councils in the region. Now, going forward, okay. going forward, we are going to focus on creating capacity for these shippers' councils in the region. Part of our agenda is to achieve that. Therefore, as Moesna now, we are going to focus on the following project the next one here. One, a parallelization of the regional maritime transport policy that now we are going to write on this document to develop conventions, calls, and protocols that will now make that document a working document. Establishment of a regional shipping line. We are embarking on a study to see how can we establish a regional shipping line that will assist us to get control of our maritime sector. Localization of marine cargo insurance. We have been doing this among us, our member states, and now we want to extend this project to our joining members. And also establishment of a regional maritime university or center of excellence that now will assist our youth to develop their capacities to become competitive in the maritime sector. So therefore, as I conclude, I want to request all of us to work as a team, wherever level or capacity you are, whether at the political level, the technical level, or the operational level, to drive the teamwork agenda. I was, want to take this opportunity to sincerely uh, thank the government of Kenya for being a wonderful host to East Coast Secretariat. They have hosted East Coast since its inception, and now they are going to host Moesna. I thank uh, my chair, former outgoing chair, the Republic of Uganda, under the leadership of Honorable Katumba Amala, for bringing us where we are. So I salute you. And also appreciate our incoming chair, the first chair of Moesna, for accepting to lead this great institution. Chair, I believe you are equal to the task. Your colleagues are here. It's testimony that we are working as a team. To our partners, who have we signed a number of uh, memorandum of collaborations, MOCs, to drive the industry together, we appreciate you, we salute you. The technical committee led by the coordination team and the technical teams, the escorts, fraternity, I salute you, 
I say thank you very much. And in the interest of time, Chair, I submit my speech and remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary General. We will now proceed to the speech by the Minister of Works and Transport, Republic of Uganda, Honorable General, General Edward Katumba Wamala, to be followed by Tanzania. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Honorable Chair, I'll also ride on the protocols which have already been observed. Uh, and I request, before I go into my speech, let's stand up a bit and we stretch a bit. They brought us and entertaining entertainers, but the people are just they were looking at them. They had wanted you to shake your head. You didn't shake your head. Now, at least turn a bit, a bit. Yes, that, that's better. And I think we are back into shape. Please take your seat. Thank you very much. <laughs> Honorable ministers in the room and the representatives of the ministers were not able to attend. The members of uh, the, the team, the secretariat, and all the members attending this uh, afternoon. I bring you warm greetings from the government and the people of the Republic of Uganda and greetings from uh, our president, retired General Yoweri Kagutam Seven, a man who talks about Africa and Africa in every speech he talks about and Africa working together. It gives me great honor and joy to be part of this memorable Moesin Assembly of ministers meeting at this immediate, as an immediate former chairman. And I'm very happy that I'm handing over a bigger organization to my uh, successor, uh, Honorable Tayari. I was telling him this morning that because of his size, I had to hand over a bigger organization than the small East Coast which I was leading. So, Honorable Tayari, you're welcome, and I'm very happy that you're here. I would like to take this opportunity to appreciate the government of the Republic of Kenya under the good leadership of His Excellency William Ruto and through the Cabinet Secretary, Secretary Honorable Salim Vuria for accepting to host this ninth assembly meeting and for the warm and African hospitality which we have even enjoyed this morning. The band, the dances, including even a dance from Uganda. I saw these Kenyans dancing my traditional <laughs> Kiganda dance. I don't know how they were able to, <laughs> to pick that, but that's Africa. It can show you, it shows you how easy it is for us to interact, and we are not only taking advantage of that. Let me also take the same opportunity to extend my sincere gratitude to all the state's representatives here from all over the region for honoring my invitation and being, being here with us today. I want to apologize, my honorable ministers, that I've been sending you very long letters. Somebody told me, your letters are so long, but I had to convince people to join East Coast and now Moesna. So my letters were very long, but they're telling the story. And I'm very happy that we have a full house today. So thank you very much for honoring the invitation and being here today. Distinguished colleagues and de delegates, as you may already be aware, shipping is the main facilitator of international trade, ensuring over 85% of global trade, as already said, which is moved around the world, including, for example, for us, who are exporting coffee, tea, and cotton from Uganda. We enjoy a lot of this. If we didn't have the shipping, <laughs> I don't know what would have happened to our coffee. It would have been uh, locally consumed, but we can't finish all of what we are producing. As emerging markets, efficient shipping and maritime services should be central in our priorities. And I'm very happy, uh, Honorable Muvria, to hear that uh, you are facilitating even fresh, fr fresh foods trade now. 
because we produce a lot of that and we take advantage of what is at Mombasa today. Today, shipping supports a lot of human activity and has become essential to humanity's well-being because without it, international trade connect, uh, connectivity amongst nations would collapse. We all remember what happened, some of you do, when we had that spate of the piracy along the Somali coast, how it affected all of us, whether you are a Parian state, whether you are a coastal state, we were all suffering. So we know what, how, what in, how important uh, shipping is in, in our life, in our lifeline. As we constantly remind ourselves of our continental aspirations, under initiatives such as the Agenda 2063, African Continental Free Trade Agreement, Revised African Maritime Transport Charter 2010, and the African Integrated Maritime Strategy aims of 2050, which envisions a developed continent driven by a liberalized trade regime anchored on a very strong uh, blue economy. We need to know that to realize these ambitions, shipping must play a pivotal, a pivotal role. I'm happy to note that with the Moesina expanded mandate covering the eastern, northern, southern Africa and Indian Ocean states of Africa, we have a formidable platform to facilitate a corrective realization of all these ambitions and the sail uh, us towards the ultimate African dream. We should just take advantage of our numbers. The big, the better. As individuals, it may be very difficult even to negotiate. It is now, now we have a bigger voice. Even when we go into negotiations, people will listen because now we have a bigger body. So people will be able to listen to us. But when you guys are an individual Ugandan country, Somebody can ignore you after all. You're so small out there. But now with Moesena, I'm sure that our voices will be heard. Honorable colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, recognizing that shipping is a regional, continental, and international activity whose complicities cannot adequately be managed unilaterally by any single state, there is need for all, all of us, for our, and, and us, for all of us, to increase our collaboration under the Muesna umbrella. Testament to the above, global shipping is currently experiencing interruptions caused by the war between Israel and Hamas, which is resulting in two increasing freight rates since January 2024. I'm informed that the Secretariat is monitoring these trends and actively engaging stakeholders in the region to ensure that the situation is not grossly exploited. This phenomena and other related ones necessitate our persistent collaboration as a region under the Moesna to jointly find sustainable mechanisms of addressing these challenges. On this note, I would wish to encourage and implore my colleagues who have not yet joined me membership of Moesna to expedite the process so that we have an expanded voice as a region. And uh, from what I transpired this morning, I was encouraged because everybody was talking, we are in process, we are in the process. Let's complete the process so that by the next year, when we convene, we'll have as many members registered as possible. Honorable members, honorable ministers, we know that regional cargo is primarily transported by foreign-owned company carriers, and as a region, we neither have sufficient control of its movement, nor have we been coordinated enough to support each other in averting the resultant challenges, exposing us to continued adverse conditions of carriage in addition to paying out and donating huge amounts of foreign currency to other countries. I think the Secretary General has uh, alluded to this and the other speakers. It is high time we came together to deliberately promote our existing national shipping lines. And I'm happy that Ethiopia is already having shipping lines. Why wouldn't we take advantage of that and build on what is already there? We can add a block. We can add stones on what Ethiopia already has. 
We may not need to invent the wheel. We can get to Ethiopia, learn from what they have done, and then build on what is already there, existing. So we should, this initiative will generate auxiliary business, stabilize freight rates, assure the region of sustainable shipping, and guarantee our maritime graduates and cadets of the much-needed sea time for their professional progression. I would wish to, therefore, task the Secretariat to expeditiously fast-track this initiative and advise the leadership of Moesna. Secretariat, I implore you, please, move into the deliverables. Do a feasibility study of how can this can be done. Let's get a, a bankable project which we can dangle to those who can be able. The private sector will play ball if we have a bankable project. Let's move to practical term things. Colleagues, our region is blessed with many inland waterways which represent us, which present us with greater potential, promote cost, uh, cost effective shipping and trade. In this regard, Uganda government has prioritized development of water transport in the medium term and the long term. We want to take advantage of the big water body which we have the Lake Victoria, which we have not been exploiting for a long time. We are currently developing a port on the, on the lake called Bukasa Port on Lake Victoria to promote trade across the lake. The navigability of River Nile is also under study. We want to see how we can connect South Sudan through the River Nile. We know that after Juba onwards to Port Sudan is navigable, but between our Nimule and, and, uh, and uh, Juba is not navigable. Is it beyond us now in this century to be able to remove the impediments between the Nile, between Nimule and Juba? Is that we are studying that to see how it can be improved. The safety of navigation brings so uh, being so critical to shipping, the government is committed to support. And as such, we are collaborating with Kenya and Tanzania to develop a coordinated regional maritime communication uh, uh, search and rescue system under which we are constructing and, in, and equipping maritime search and rescue centers on Lake Victoria, Lake Choga, and Lake Albert, so that in case there is any accident on the lake, we are able to respond and respond uh, uh, adequately. To accelerate growth in the industry, my government recognizes the key role of public-private partnership. Therefore, we incentivize the private sector to take lead in providing shipping services as government focuses on infrastructure development and policy guidance. This has seen private initiatives, such as we have now a company called Mahathi Infra Services, which has developed a very big vessel transporting petroleum products from Kisumu uh, into Uganda as opposed to moving it by road. And also, another vessel has just been uh, developed. It's a roll, a roll and roll off, uh, which can take 1,000 tons uh, of, of cargo, uh, both trailers and uh, containerized cargo. Honorable ministers and ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate the tremendous work Moesina continues to do in the region in line of enabling regional states to develop their local maritime economies. This comes through expert advisories to the member states. For example, Moesina expert analysis identified that the four Moesina founding member states were losing over $500 million annually due to the wrong application of uh, ANCO terms by, imp by, importing, uh, by importing on cost insurance and freight, CIF basis. This conduct is not only illegal, but also means that the insurance component of such transactions continues to be donated to foreign insurance markets. Yet, we have our own insurance industry in the region. So I want to thank the Secretariat for that effort and please continue identifying those areas where we are being exploited because I think there are still many. I'm happy to note that Moesina continues to work closely with the, our insurance regulatory authorities, tax authorities, the insurers, and other stakeholders 
to have maritime cargo insurance domesticated across the region. Ladies and gentlemen, during my tenure as chair of this Honorable Assembly, which I've already handed over, we have registered some progress, some milestones, including the finalization of the draft of the regional maritime transport policy, which you had the Secretary General talking about, and he has already in elaborated what the policy is all about. We have also finalized the drafting of the constitution for the Regional Shippers Council, which body shall greatly support the National Shippers Councils and provide a structural link with Moesna. In the interest of having close private sector involvement in the running of Moesna, my prayer is that Regional Shippers Council will be progressed to form part of Moesna organs soon. I'm pleased to have assumed chairmanship when we were East Coast and I'm leaving when we are Moesna with an expanded geographical mandate directly reflected in the name of the organization. I've also been privileged to oversee the admission of two additional members to the organization. On behalf of the Moesna fraternity, I take this opportunity to officially thank the Federal Republic, Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia for honoring our invitation to join Mohesna. You are welcome, highly welcome. With great honor, I wish to request all of you colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, to join me in a hand clap by welcoming to welcome the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia to the, this big family. That should encourage all the other members who are still behind. Please make sure that you get that big hand clap the next time you are attending this such a kind of a meeting. From the discussions I've had with my honorable colleagues and the Secretariat, it is further promising that many other states have expressed willingness to join this organization and at different levels of navigating the internal processes of applying for their membership. I congratulate those states for the progress made. C colleagues, as the Republic of Zambia assumes chairmanship of Moesna, I wish to pledge my full support to Honorable uh, Frank Museba Tayari. Yesterday I was telling him Tayari is a Swahili word meaning ready. So you can see the guy was ready really to take over the leadership <laughs> of Moesna. So um, I have no doubt that he was already prepared and is ready to drive Moesna, a big organization than the one I was leading to better heights. So I, want, I, I pledge my support and I'm looking forward to working with you and the Secretariat for us to achieve what we want. Finally, my sincere thanks goes to the Coordinating Committee and the Secretariat. Thank you. Thank you. Secretary General, thank you. I've been a, dri a, a bad driver. <laughs> I've been pushing you hard. <laughs> Many times I've made a, a, a lot of demands of you. Thank you for bearing me <laughs> and my, uh, bearing my pushing. And uh, I think now you can see the results. So if uh, Honorable Tayari pushes you harder than me, please comply. Because when we push, results are delivered. So I want to thank all of you. I want to thank, thank the Secretariat. Thank you very much for organizing and welcoming us and keeping us in very safe here. And uh, Honorable Mubia, thank you for the great hosting. We are looking forward to having a nice evening. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming. And we are moving forward. God bless you. Thank you so much, our outgoing chair. I uh, would now like to welcome the United Republic of Tanzania, represented by the ambassador to Kenya, His Excellency, Mr. Bernard Kibese. Karibu. Mpigeni makofi, tafadhali. Alijua mini mswaili. Ndobala kasema mpigeni makofi. That's what I wanted to hear. Uh, 
Honorable Frank Musebatayari, the chairperson of Moesna. Well, uh, I ask you for the permission to ride on the established protocol. It would be high level of indiscipline for a diplomat like me not to recognize the presence of our host, Honorable Salim Mvulia, CS and Minister of Mining, Brew Economy, and Maritime Affairs of the Republic of Kenya. But again, uh, how can I afford uh, not to recognize the outgoing chairman of ISCOS, Honorable General Edward Katumba Wamara, Minister of Works and Transport of the Republic of Uganda. After recognizing the presence of uh, Mr. Mwanza, the Secretary General of Moesna, please now allow me to, to write on the already established protocols. Honorable ministers, distinguished delegates, I'm here by representing my Minister of Transport, Honorable Professor Makame Mnya Mbarawa, Minister of Transport of the United Republic of Tanzania. And on his behalf, it is my honor to be a part of this important meeting for the regional ministers in charge of the shipping and maritime affairs. But first and foremost, I thank the Almighty God for his mercy and blessing that enabled us to meet here today. But I'm grateful and I appreciate the warm reception accorded to us by our host, Honorable Salim Mvulia. However, I wish to take note of the presence of our counterpart ministers and representatives from our neighboring states from Eastern, Southern, and Northern Africa, as well as the Western Indian Ocean Island states. As one of the members of Moesna, I take this opportunity to welcome you to this meeting and encourage you to join full membership of the organization so that together we can build a well-coordinated maritime region that enjoy seamless and competitive water transport system. And on this note, I commend the Secretary General and his team for achieving the Assembly's inspiration by once more bringing together states using the Indian Ocean and the Red Sea as the maritime passage of their imports and exports for a common cause. It is a great honor to our forefathers who saw the need and created ISCOS, which is now expanding its scope and rebranding to become the maritime organization for Eastern, Southern, and Northern Africa, or as you call it, Moesna. Honorable members, on a special note, as it, it was done by the outgoing speaker, I wish to congratulate the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia for becoming a sixth full member of Moesna and Honorable Dr. Rem Sime, congratulations and welcome to Moesna. Your decision to join us 
in full capacity will go a long way in fostering regional collaboration, working together in a sector like maritime, which is international in nature, cannot be overemphasized. And I hope Ethiopia's decision will inspire other states in the region to join us so that together we can build a maritime powerful house region. Honorable ministers, let me take this opportunity once again to congratulate the Republic of Kenya to your election at IMO's 34th session, a council member under category C. Your win signifies our regional unit, as I believe. All Moesna members voted and campaigned for Kenya as one of our own in the region. Let us take disadvantage of our number and support each other wherever one among us needs our support because together we can achieve our goals. And once again, Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Mvulia, congratulations. Remember, your win is not for Kenyans alone, but for the region as you represent the regional interest at IMO. Honorable ministers, ladies and gentlemen, what about this? The ocean and lakes are shared by different states in many cases, may have different policies and strategies in harnessing these resources. The situation has brought disjointed investment in infrastructures and system development, which hinders seamless flow of maritime traffic in the region and beyond. I believe having Moesna in place, bringing in a wider regional coverage characterized by unified policies and strategies, le leveraging on synergies from our numbers will see a vira, vibrant maritime region saved by competitive shipping services, endeavoring on the reduction of shipping cost. Furthermore, containing transboundary crimes through waters requires transnational joint efforts, and therefore, Moesna is well placed to coordinate national efforts on a common cause for a safer and secure maritime environment in the Isna region. Honorable ministers and delegates, as you remember, and we are all witness, uh, we witnessed the aftermath of COVID-19. Careers ignored our region when their containers were held in some areas outside the region that limited containers availability. The available few containers were located to the most profitable routes, leaving our region starved of containers which hiked freight rates, a situation that can mainly be attributed to over-reliance on foreign shipping services providers as we do not have our own ships. This cannot be overemphasized. As we gather here, it is high time we come together, pull our resources and establish our own shipping lines on which we can learn, we can lean on during difficult times. But the importance of shipping line cannot again be overemphasized. The shipping line will create jobs for our people, opportunities for placement of our cadet for sea time, but also enable us to retain the much needed foreign currents paid out on freight for shipment, but also increase liner shipping connectivity, and above all, we will have a say on the movement of our export and imports to and from our overseas. Honorable 
ministers and delegates, the complex and cross boundaries nature of maritime transport requires a well-trained and knowledgeable workforce who meet the international standard. It requires both sea and land-based human resources that are well equipped with industrial knowledge that meet expectation of the industry's stakeholders. In this regard, we need to pull our resources together for the development of proper regional training facilities uh, that meet international standard certifications and accreditations. And based on the ongoing global development and with proper planning and strategies, our region is well placed to become a global basket for seafarers. Therefore, there is a need for a greater regional collaboration to ensuring that our trainees, especially our cadets and ratings get shipped for sea time, which is crucial for their competencies. But I'm aware that the Secretariat is strategizing and working towards establishing a regional maritime university, which would be well equipped to produce well-trained personnel who meets the industrial expectation. I hope our technocrat will critically analyze it and bring a proposal for us for deliberation and approvals. I want to emphasize here that the United Republic of Tanzania, under the leadership of Her Excellency President Dr. Samia Suluhu Hassan, is ready to host the regional maritime university. We have, we have enough land and good environment to accommodate such a center of excellence in maritime training. Again, President Samia Suru Hassan is ready and able to establish uh, this center of excellence in Tanzania. But I appreciate the current Moistness initiative of bringing together national maritime training institution in the regional at different forums to share experience and discuss challenges facing maritime training with a few finding solutions as a region. Honorable ministers and delegates, Tanzania as a coastal state continues to provide passage and facilitate movement of transit good through our ports and along the corridors. Tanzania has made strides in expanding and modernizing its ports. We have implemented the Dar es Salaam Maritime Gateway Project, which involves deepening and strengthening of birth, the construction of a new multipurpose birth, deepening and widening the entrance channel and turning basin into the ports and improving the rail linkage and platform in the port. But not only the Dar es Salaam port, but we have also expanded the Mtwara port and rehabilitated the Tanga port by increasing equipment and dredging to bring the ships at Koi and therefore reduce operational cost as there is no more cargo handling at the outer anchorage. Honorable ministers and delegation, before winding up my speech, I wish to express my sincere gratitude to the Coordination Committee for the well-prepared meeting. I also wish to congratulate the Secretariat for the programs which has been implemented and urge them to continue implementing programs as agreed upon. I congratulate and appreciate the Republic of Uganda for steering well our organization for the period of two years as a chair. I congratulate you, Honorable General Katumba Wamala, 
Minister of Works and Transport for the work well done. I appreciate Honorable Tayali and Tayali for his readiness, the Minister of Transport and Logistics of the Republic of Zambia for accepting to take the chairmanship for the next two years. And finally, I would like to thank our host again, Kenya, for the warm reception and hosting us. And we were hosted very well indeed. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Your uh, His Excellency Ambassador. At this point, I would uh, we would like to welcome Ethiopia and being a new minister. At this juncture, we would be requesting through the chair to welcome Ethiopia officially. Um, can I have one of the head ushers, Agnes? Kindly come and help with the plaque. We will ceremoniously welcome our sixth member state to Moesna. Ethiopia delegation, please come forward. A round of applause for Ethiopia, the sixth member state of Moesna, and the first member state to join us uh, uh, using our new name, Moesna. Thank you very much. and. Uh, Ethiopia, you may now take the stage to give your speech officially as our sixth member state. I'm very happy, that's why I <laughs> took time to control my emotion. <laughs> Honorable Frank Masala Tayal, Minister of Transport and Logistics of the Republic of Korea, uh, Republic of Tanzania, Zambia, and also chairperson of Moesna. Our host, Honorable Salim Mayara, Minister of Mining, Blue Economy, and uh, Maritime Affairs of the Republic of Kenya. Honorable General Edward Kotumba, Wamala, Minister of Workers and Transport of the Republic of Uganda and the outgoing chair. All protocols that have be already been established, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great honor and pleasure to address this meeting of ministers responsible for shipping and maritime matters at the occasion of the ninth meeting of the East Coast Assembly of Ministers from the onset, no. um, from the onset, I wish to thank the government of the Republic of Kenya and East Coast for the warm reception and accorded to me and my delegation since our arrival in the beautiful city of Nairobi. Honorable ministers, in March 2023, I attended the A's meeting of the Assembly of Ministers as a prospective member of ISCOS. Now I feel privileged and honored to speak to you as a member of the assembly, the member of the assembly of ministers of maritime organization for Eastern, Southern, and Northern Africa, Moesna. The spirit of Thank you. The spirit of the African Union is to bring us together as Africa and as African states. We cannot be having the same challenges in shipping and yet we don't take the effort to talk to one another. The need for collaboration in the shipping and maritime sector is real and of recent. We have witnessed increased cases of bilateral agreements between regional states in the area of shipping and intra-regional trade, but international such as, sorry, 
But the truth is that shipping business is very complex and indeed very international, such that bilateral agreements which depend much on the goodwill of the two states may not be the solution to the, the cross-cutting issues that have affect us as African state. Honorable ministers, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that maritime transport is responsible for the movement of more than 80% of the international trade, but it is also true that shipping remains one of the least understood and least appreciated sector in Africa. And this is so especially for land link status, many of whom still feel that shipping is about ports and that if you were not a coastal nation, then you will don't have to spend a lot of energy on shipping affairs. This is very unfortunate as shipping business should be the concern of every import and exporting nations which is mindful of the cost of the international trade. Let me take this opportunity to thank the founding states of ISCOS, the Republic of Kenya, the United Republic of Tanzania, the Republic of Uganda and the Republic of Zambia for the landmark decision to open up membership of the organization. And for the seeing the need for us to move together as a region. This assembly's decision to change the name of the organization has also given us a sense of belongingness and as regional status we should now take advantage of our numbers to build our synergies and develop our maritime sector. I am aware that the best and central Africans, the West and Central African states are already well organized under the Maritime Organization for West and Central Africa which is a 25-member organization for West and Central Africa. Uh, reason, for, reason w for there is no reason what, whatsoever that on this side of Africa we should not be organized under our own organization. Honorable ministers, you may agree with me that the biggest mismatch in Africa's maritime trade is that while those serving us make it a priority to talk to each other and form alliance, those who are being served all facing the same challenges of raising ships cost, shipping costs and adverse policies have chosen to act unilaterally. Service sector both in aviation and maritime transport, even when we have a big base of our own aircraft, we will need alliances because they help us to leverage on the common of facilities having common platforms for customers' incentives. This is the way African states, many of us, without own vessels, but very active in, without, in import and export trade, can believe that we can go at it alone without a big sacrifice from our economies. We are looking at Moesa, Moesna as platform which we can enable us to identify opportunities amongst us in intra-regional trade, leverage on each other, strengthen and be an avenue to pooling resources, ideas and synergies together for our international shipping 
business. The Ethiopian shipping and logistics operates a fleet of 10 vessels navigating routes between China, the Middle East, India, Djibouti, and over 365 international ports through slot arrangements we plan to expand our fleet and vessel calls. I am pleased to note that Moensa is addressing cabotage issues that hinder the seamless movement of African vessels along the Eastern African coasting. Thanks to this effort, Ethiopia shipping line through Moensa, Moisna is prepared to navigate and negotiate with our African colleagues for transport of cargo within the region and to end from overseas markets. In May 2024, we made our first vessel call to the port of Lamu with our newly acquired vessel called Abai 2 successfully delivering 61,107 metric tons of fertilizer, a first in Lamus and largest bulk shipping by volume in Kenyan history. We, we seek unwavering support from all concerned African shipping and maritime members to bolster our success. I urge regional status to leverage Moesna's platform for dialogue on enhancing our capacity for sealing vessels and development, developing intra-regional trade among ourselves. I totally agree with the deliberations of honorable ministers this morning that in order to reduce the dependency of foreign-owned carriers in the transportation of Africa's international trade, it is imperative that African states start a conversation on the dimensions of maritime carriage and transportation for cargo, including how regional states must promote and invest in the ownership of vessels, look at the possibilities of container manufacturing and leasing, how to influence overseas and international markets, and many others. We also need to work under the Moesna to explore our intra-regional trade opportunities through maritime connectivity. Honorable ministers and ladies and gentlemen, this is the platform we need to help us put our ideas together monitor our decisions and implement our programs. Therefore, to my colleagues in the region who are still carrying our out internal consultations, I know that convincing our governments, many of whom are not very sensitized about shipping and maritime issues can be a real challenge. I want to make passionate appeal to you, honorable ministers and countries, representatives present here to do all what you can to bring your countries on board. Because it is when we have numbers that we shall benefit from our unity in diversity. As I conclude, my remarks, honorable ministers, I wish to thank the Assembly of Ministers of Moinsna for being, believing relentless on the matter of collaboration and the development of Africa's maritime trade. I also appreciate the Secretariat for the technical support provided to my ministry while navigating the process of membership to this organization. Thank you, Asante Nisana. Thank you so much. Uh,
Honorable Minister Ethiopia. We now proceed with the Honorable Minister Mohamed Abdelkadir um, from the Federal Government of Somalia. Good afternoon once again. From where I'm seated, I have the advantage of looking at all of us in this room. And we are now appearing so tired. I don't want to just embarrass any one of you. I can literally point at the people that were sleeping <laughs> who will not go there. But I thought that I'd be failing in my duty as the chair for Moisna to also say that may we now guide the remaining speakers that in the interest of time, um, we are limited in terms of uh, our delivery time of speeches. Let me say that I'm giving each of the remaining uh, speakers only two minutes. And this is because you have got to look at uh, the opportunity to become a full member <laughs> so that you will have the privilege to speak as long as Tanzania did, as long as Ethiopia has done, indeed as long as Uganda did. So we can't give you all the freedom at this stage. Uh, you need to work for these opportunities. Thank you so much. I've guided. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, it is a matter of time. It is have to be uh, precise. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, good afternoon, uh, Honorable uh, Minister Frank Tiali, Chairperson and the Ministry of Transport and Logistics of Zambia. Honorable Minister General Kutumba. Umala, outgoing chairperson and Ministry of Works and Transport of Republic of Uganda. Honorable Minister Salim Mukufi, the Ministry of Mining, Blue Economy and Maritime Affairs of Republic of Kenya and Hosting Country. Honorable ministers, my friends, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, all protocols of Southern, good afternoon. Really, it is a great honor for me to address you all today at this important conference as we together here to discuss the pressing issues facing our society towards shipping industry. We must remember the importance of the unity and the collaboration in finding solutions. Honorable Ministers, distinguished guests, I'm pleased to see so many passionate and individualists and experts from various fields coming together to share their knowledge and insights. It's tough open dialogue and cooperation that we can make a progress on the challenges we face. In rapid changing world, it is crucial that we adapt and innovate to meet the needs of our, so our communities. As a government, we are committed to supporting initiatives that promote growth, sustainability, and inclusivity. The maritime organization Eastern, Southern, Northern Africa, MUESA, has made significant achievements in promoting international cooperation and coordination in the shipping industry. Some of the key accomplishments, providing a platform for dialogue and information sharing among members, member states to improve global shipping governance, supporting capacity building and technical assistance program to enhance the, capa the capabilities of developing countries in the maritime sector, promoting sustainable shipping practices and environmental protection measures. Honorable ministers, distinguished guests, 
I argue all of you, especially the minister is responsible for shipping and maritime affairs of the states in the eastern, southern, and northern Africa to engage in meaningful conversations to list to diverse perspectives and to work together toward bringing future for all. Let us, har let us harness the power of collective action to build more re resilient and prosperous society. Thank you for the hosting country, Kenya, our brothers, for the, for the very welcoming hospitality. I'm saying thank you again all for the time. Thank you so much. Um, we now move to the Kingdom of Eswatini. Um, yeah. The Honorable Salamusa Loni Pondwandwe, the Minister of Public Works and Transport. Uh, thank you, Program Director. Two minutes is not long. I didn't say it's short. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairperson, thank you so much. You instructed me to talk about the Red Dance. Unfortunately, I cannot cover it in two minutes. Uh, my greetings to the host, uh, the minister from the Republic of Kenya, our outgoing chairperson, minister from Uganda, uh, honorable ministers present here, uh, our secretary general, the secretariat, government officials, and everyone. Uh, my greetings from the kingdom of Eswatini, and I would like to start by expressing that we are so honored to be invited and being part of this uh, discussion where we talk shipping and maritime. And with that, I want to take this opportunity to appreciate member states who spearheaded the formation of this kind of organization. Learning from um, other sectors like aviation, in Africa, we have regional um, formations, and then we have um, the African, which is AFCAC, which then feeds into ICAO, which is the international organization. So this kind of organization, I would say, was long overdue. It has been already alluded that we do a lot of our transportation, uh, um, the maritime contributes 80%, and then one wonders as to where are we? Why do we remain consumers of the service? Why can't we actively participate in everything that happens so that we're able to identify gaps, inefficiencies, what doesn't work well for us? So that is why I appreciate so much uh, those member states who spearheaded the formation of this organization. I would say that um, as Eswatini, we are not so much active as we are uh, surrounded by countries, which is South Africa and Mozambique. And we work well with them uh, using the airports, mainly Deben and Maputo. So those are the ports that we, we access as a country. But now, uh, coming to this kind of setup, where the chairman said it, it is so open, even those countries that have no direct access to the sea, they can still uh, have an opportunity in this kind of operation, which we, um, which we really appreciate, and we looking forward. We are looking forward to being. Um, no one is not a member. We are all members. Uh, we are members, as the, the the name suggests. I'm from the south, so south is covered in this. Uh, so I'll, I take myself as a member. It's just a question of. Um, doing something, uh, formalization of uh, uh, our membership, doing the right thing so that we assume our roles and responsibilities and enjoy the relevant privileges that come with this organization. So thank you so much. Um, we lo are looking forward to working well with you, uh, Mr. Chairperson. Congratulations. And uh, thank you so much uh, for Kenya for such a wonderful um, uh, um, event being hosted by you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon.
Thank you. Uh, next would be the Republic of Seychelles, represented by His Excellency Dijak Anthony, Minister of Transport. Good afternoon, Your Excellencies, Mr. Chair. Uh, we've all torn our speeches, and uh, now we have to improvise. So Seychelles adopts all the previous speeches as its own. That's number one. <laughs> number two, you can hardly find anything that's not been said. All has been covered. So I will simply state that this meeting is very opportune because we are in one of our worst global crises, that is for the shipping industry and maritime, and this directly affects all of us. Seychelles as a small island developing state is also very much affected. What we have, we have so many crises. For example, shipping in the Black Sea because of the Ukraine war, crisis in the Red Sea because of the Israel and Gaza episode and war, crisis in the Panama Canal adversely affecting shipping. And this has accumulated and has uh, brought about as never before, a huge increase in insurance and freight costs. And this impacts directly on our countries. We all see inflation, the rise in cost of living, and you can see in all our states, there's also some social unrest as a result of the rising cost of living. Our people are unhappy. So this meeting, if it propels us to come together to collaborate, to, to have common maritime policies, it's because our interests are one. We need to have connectivity. We need to more control. We need prices to come down. And we need to serve our respective economies. You've spoken a lot about rivers and lakes. Uh, also, let's look at how the island states like Mauritius, Madagascar, Comor, Seychelles can trade with the continental states. At the moment, four major shipping companies control 80% of the shipping in our waters in the Indian Ocean in the world. And they monopolize, like uh, the minister spoke about manufacturing containers in Africa. They manufacture, and without the containers, you cannot move your cargo. So we have to do that. This has to be one of the deliverables that one of us starts manufacture of containers, manufacture of ships, setting up of shipping companies, empowering the private sector to invest and to form shipping lines with our backing, our policies, our regulations, and we facilitate, we give them access to concessionary loans, we even in invest, because we invest in infrastructure. For example, Seychelles is investing in a new port. And many African countries like Madagascar, uh, Kenya, uh, Ethiopia, are investing in new ports. So it's one more investment in our own shipping lines. I wish to thank you, and uh, I thank our host, the government, the president, the minister of uh, Kenya. Thank you very much. And I wish all the best to our new chairman. He's a very active, very vigorous, and I call him uh, uh, a lion. So he's going to roar, and we're going to have deliverables. Don't forget that our chairman who's exiting, our minister from Uganda, has given an order. There must be deliverables and there must be a timeline. Thank you very much. Thank you, Seychelles. Next would be Malawi, represented by Honorable David Mzandu. Honorable Chairman, um, Honorable Frank Tayari, Minister of Transport and Logistics of the Republic of Zambia. The Honorable Salim, Minister of Mining and Bull Economy and Maritime Affairs of the Republic of Kenya, and the Honorable uh, General Enwadi Katumba, a Minister of Works and Transport of the Republic of Uganda, and the Secretary General 
of Moasina. Listening to all the speeches that have been made here already, I don't seem to see anything to add. Uh, other than to say that um, Malawi is committed to become a full member of Moesna. Malawi fully supports the objectives and the initiatives of Moesna. And Malawi cannot wait to see the vision of Moesna being fully realized in the near future. The issues that has been articulated already, the issues of uh, domesticating insurance, the issue of uh, a regional uh, shipping line, uh, the issue of manufacturing uh, containers within our region, those are the issues Malawi will be looking forward to in terms of achievement. Um, I want to assure you, Mr. Chairman, that come the next year, uh, meeting of the Council, uh, Malawi will proudly uh, present its full membership. With those few remarks, allow me to say thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and we wish you well in your new assignment. Um, everything has been already said about you. If you are a lion, what we, we expect a, a lot of progress. Let me also uh, salute the outgoing uh, chairman, uh, Honorable General Edward Katumba Wamara. Uh, I met him in Lubumbashi. Now that we meet here again, I want to say uh, congratulations for the work well done. Uh, Secretary General, uh, thank you very much. I thought it was you who was writing those letters, long letters, but now I know it was the chairman. Uh, thank you very much for the work uh, well done. Uh, we wish you well. Uh, you have the support of my country. Lastly, allow me to convey um, uh, greetings and uh, congratulatory message from my president, uh, His Excellency Makikafe Chakwera. He, he wishes all of us well. May God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Next is um, Republic of Namibia, represented by Honorable uh, Nekundi, Deputy Minister, um, Minister of Works and Transport. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Director of Proceedings, Master Chair, and the host. Uh, first and foremost, let me submit my appreciation. No, it's okay. We are now told two minutes, and I'll be in two minutes. Uh, to uh, hand it over to the chairperson. Um, I'm very much happy, Master Host, uh, Honorable Host, to be in, uh, in Kenya. I'm happy because um, uh, the hospitality I've received here, and that um, on arrival at the airport, I have received an award for being permanent sexy in, uh, in Kenya. So I'm very much happy to be given that very beautiful award. So I'm, apparently nobody can compete with me in terms of sexiness. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Namibia is very much happy to be invited to, very, to this very important body that promote the ideals of Africanisms that enable us to coordinate the meaningful means of trade and coordination of logistics within Africa. So it's very much imperative as we endorse all the statements as attributed here by all member states and fellow African ministers who are present, 
Namibia is very much ready to participate in this very important endeavor as we promote intra-Africa trade. We shall uh, bring all efforts to the table as soon as we have joined, and I'm certain that uh, we shall very soon and very soon uh, take up our rightful place within the body space of Muisna. So, and we shall become a full member. And we are looking forward to, to ensure that Namibia as a country, part of Africa, part of uh, Southern Africa, we shall be in bring all necessary effort in order to ensure that this very important vision is realized in our lifetime. I so submit, thank you very much. Thank you. Next is the Republic of South Sudan, represented by Ms. Maria Kech Taban, Deputy Minister, Ministry of Transport. That is where I'm going to start. Thank you very much, for Moderator, uh, Chair, and our outgoing Chair, the rest of the Ministers, especially the host, uh, the Secretariat, ladies and gentlemen. In my two minutes, I want to make two points. One, I will start with the last uh, introduction by the moderator. I want to make this correction. I've been hearing it's pinching my heart because I'm taking someone's position. <laughs> my name is Mera Kech. Right from the beginning of the introduction, I stated that I'm a PS for the Ministry of Transport, Republic of South Sudan. I'm representing my minister, uh, Honorable Madud Biar, the Minister for Transport, who delegated me actually to take part in this Honorable Assembly. It is an opportunity for me to witness a lot of good things. We listen to a lot of speeches which the Republic of South Sudan subscribed to. Chair, the second thing that I wanted to say in my two minutes is to reiterate the commitment of Republic of South Sudan, as I stated this morning, that the Republic of South Sudan is in the advanced stage to become a full member of this family. And uh, it is my sincere wish in this assembly today, this afternoon, that in the next meeting, in the next General Assembly, will, South Sudan will not be the same as we are today. So we needed this organization more than anybody, any country, any member, because of our landlocked status. Our logistic and transport costs is extremely very high. I hope by being part of this, we can be able to reduce on that. Lastly, I thank each and every one of you who participated in giving us a very, very excellent hospitality through you, Honorable Minister, the host. We have really enjoyed in these few hours in this country uh, very much the kind of speciality that we always enjoy in East African community meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Pierce, and we regret the misrepresentation of your title. I will now move to um, Republic of Botswana, Honorable Johannes Simako, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Transport and Public Works. Thank you very much. Outgoing chair, incoming chair, um, I will be less than two minutes um, as directed. Um, as you know, Lotswana is land linked. We have absolutely no access to the sea. And it is only through this membership, um, through those who know clearly what to do, that we would then be able to to participate and benefit from from being a member of Moesna. On behalf of my minister, 
Eric Molale and His Excellency the President, I do pledge and indicate that uh, we are at advanced stages of becoming members of Moesna. It is all through cabinet this week and definitely in the next assembly we will be part of part of this great um, organization. We do not have a single document on anything that has to do with maritime um, subsector. But um, we, we did uh, generate a multimodal um, policy that clearly indicated that we need to develop the sector and be part of it and also benefit from the only um, existing bilateral agreements. Uh, so as a member, we really do look forward to to opening up the seas and being able to, to benefit from the economics um, of, of being a, a member. To you, Chair, I wish you all the best. And through your guidance, um, as you have done in all the other aspects of our corridor development, we do look forward to your, to your leadership. I submit. Thank you, sir. We will have next the representative of the Minister of Trade, Transport, and Industry and Tourism, Republic of Burundi, Ms. Ninina Hazwe Godlibe. Thank you. I apologize. I'm going to change the language and speak in French. Excellence et Monsieur le Président de Moesna et tous les membres du secrétariat, Excellence et Monsieur le Ministre ici présent, euh, Excellence et Monsieur les délégués qui ont représenté les ministres qui n'ont pas pu être présents pour des raisons diverses. Euh, et moi qui parle, je suis... Euh, le directeur général de l'autorité maritime et portuaire du Burundi. J'ai représenté, Excellence euh, Nijim Belémarie Chantal, ministre du Commerce et du Transport, euh, de l'Industrie et du Tourisme du Burundi. Elle est ma déléguée pour la représenter dans ses assises. Et je présente alors ses salutations. Euh, et de là alors, euh, moi aussi, je voudrais euh, me joindre aux autres qui ont parlé avant moi, à remercier tout d'abord les, les organisateurs de cette Assemblée, nation, de, cette assemblée et, et de Moesna. Nous avons eu l'invitation de l'ISCOS, mais nous partons euh, avec euh, une autre appellation et c'est très bien. Alors, euh, je voudrais vous parler un peu des étapes euh, où arrive euh, la République du Burundi pour l'adhésion euh, à Moesna. Euh, C'est qu'en euh, 2022, nous avons eu l'invitation d'adhérer euh, à l'ISCOS. Et maintenant, euh, euh, le dossier est à, à la primature au bureau du Premier ministre pour être acheminé euh, au Conseil des ministres. Je crois que euh, dans la prochaine euh, assemblée, nous serons, le Burundi sera membre effectif de Moesna. Euh, merci, merci. Je voudrais euh, de ce point, en fait, je n'ai pas beaucoup euh, de choses à parler, mais tout simplement, euh, je voudrais remercier euh, pour terminer le ministre Kenyan, euh, ici présent, qui a accepté euh, d'accompagner ses assises et d'être présent ici dans l'organisation euh, de cette assemblée. Nous souhaitons à Moesna euh, de progresser et avoir aussi beaucoup de pays membres afin que les échanges commerciaux, les échanges commerciaux à travers euh, la voie maritime puissent être développés pour qu'ils boostent les économies de nos pays respectifs. Et c'est sur ces mots que je termine en remerciant tout le monde. Merci. Um, 
Thank you, Burundi. Next is the Union of Comoros, represented by Mr. Mohamed Said Dahlane, representing the Honorable Minister from the Ministry of Maritime and Transport. Bonjour à tous. Je pense que euh, le modérateur a fait à ce que les Français continuent pour que vous n'enlevez pas les masques. Honorable assistance, honorable euh, Monsieur le Président, de euh, aujourd'hui on va changer, hein, on va parler de nos euh, Je tiens d'abord à à exprimer ma joie et à féliciter la réussite de cette, de, de cette euh, assemblée euh, grâce au secrétariat général de l'ISCOS, que euh, ce n'est pas une première. Euh, cette équipe, nous le connaissons, ils font toujours les choses à bon point. Euh, moi, je ne vais pas parler comme les autres. Je ne suis pas très politicien. Je suis praticien. J'espère aux lions qui viennent d'arriver de faire d'une façon pragmatique cette institution à passer dans les actions. Je vais dire par là, achetons des bateaux, faisons la ligne. Mais je pense qu'avec Iscos, on a tout parlé, on a fait tout ce qui est de paperas et ce qui est de de euh, loi, j'aurais souhaité que actuellement, parce que nous les petites îles souffrons euh, de, na, de ne pas avoir euh, des lignes permanentes euh, et que euh, nous pourrons ensemble faire une ligne permanente. Actuellement, les Comores dépendent de, de, de Mombasa, d'Aleslam, euh, de Dar Islam et de Majenga pour s'alimenter, pour, euh, euh, pour le transport. Et si, aujourd'hui, la Moessa arrive à créer, dans les prochains euh, mois ou années, une ligne de navigation, je pense que ça va commencer à faire de nous un, un réel euh, euh, moteur pour développer notre commerce régional pour développer notre économie régionale, pour ne pas dépendre des grandes lignes qui imposent leur fret et le coût de la vie de la population deviendra euh, amoindri et c'est ça le rôle de nos associations. Je vous remercie. Merci. Next is the uh, Republic of Djibouti. Uh, yes, we have to make use of the translation system. We paid for it. <laughs> Mr. Ali Mira, representing the Honorable Minister. Thank you. Uh, uh, merci. Euh, Monsieur le Président, euh, je suis euh, très honoré. Euh, je réitère euh, nos, euh, nos remerciements à l'endroit de, de, du gouvernement de, euh, du Kenya pour euh, avoir organisé cette excellente rencontre qui, j'avoue, a, a mis la barre Très haut et, et de manière solennelle, je voudrais ici aussi euh, présenter notre reconnaissance au président sortant qui a mené, dois-je dire, le, le bateau à bon port. Et nous restons convaincus que le président entrant en votre, en votre personne, monsieur le président, vous allez euh, amener, vous allez dans la foulée, dans la continuité, euh, mener le bateau euh, dans une euh, à, même à dois-je dire à des, des mers tamouteuses amener le, le bateau à bon port aussi 
Je voudrais aussi ici, euh, représentant le ministre de l'équipement et des transports, qui, comme j'ai dit ce matin, est, a été retenu euh, pour... Euh, euh, comme Djibouti célèbre euh, son, 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 son 47e année d'anniversaire, a été, a été retenu. Euh, C'est la politique du gouvernement de Djibouti. Aucun ministre ne doit sortir, aucun politique ne doit sortir du pays. Il doit représenter, dans, chacun doit représenter dans, ses, dans sa région. Donc j'ai cet euh, honneur de, de le représenter. Et, et, et j'ai l'engagement, et de manière solennelle, je le dis ici, comme je, et je le répète, que Djibouti euh, s'engage à, euh, à, joint, à rejoindre cette ambition de, régionale qui est l'organisation intergouvernementale qui va comment dirais-je, donner un dynamisme à notre région. Ce dynamisme, c'est que son, ch chacun de nous doit, comment dirais-je, donner sa contribution. Aujourd'hui, le Djibouti s'est beaucoup investi dans, dans les infrastructures portuaires, mais sans et je l'ai dit ce matin, sans que nous puissions avoir des infrastructures routières, sans que nous puissions avoir, euh, comment dirais-je, des corridors modernes, nous pouvons pas la région ne pourra pas décoller. Nous serons toujours aussi, si nous ne disposons pas de nos moyens, de nos, de nos, nos navires à nous de la région, si nous ne disposons pas de, 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 de flotte, nous serons dépendants encore et encore de l'extérieur. Et aujourd'hui, un port pour qu'il soit moderne, pour qu'il soit compétitif, il ne suffit pas qu'en fait, ce n'est plus l'époque où on, le, un port était destiné à un chargement, à un déchargement. Si nous n'avons pas, chacun de nos ports ne dispose pas des infrastructures, des, euh, des activités de plus-value périphériques. Et je crois qu'aujourd'hui, cette ambition, nous l'avons avec nous, des ambitions qui nous donnent, nous projettent vers l'avenir. Et Djibouti, aujourd'hui, la porte d'entrée de toute l'Afrique de l'Est et les pays de, des, des pays Grand Lac a cette ambition de, 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 de servir non simplement Djibouti, mais l'Éthiopie, mais l'au-delà. Notre ambition est que le conteneur qui va être déchargé à Djibouti, arrive à Bangui, arrive à Djouba, arrive euh, les grands pays, euh, des, des, les pays de Grand Lac. C'est ça. Et c'est ensemble qu'on pourra euh, demain euh, construire l'avenir de la région. Voilà. Euh, c'est que je voulais dire et de manière solennelle devant l'Assemblée Générale. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, sir. Last but not least, we have Mr. Unite Mustafa, representing um, the Minister of Transport and Communications, Republic of Mozambique. Muito boa tarde. This is not English, this is not French, it's a, it's a new language, Portuguese. Muito obrigado, Sua Excelência, o Ministro dos Transportes e Logística da República da Zâmbia e Presidente desta sessão. Em nome de Sua Excelência, o Ministro dos Transportes e Comunicações, o Dr. Mateus Magala, da República de Moçambique, queiram, por favor, aceitar os nossos agradecimentos pelo convite endereçado 
por sua excelência o general Eduardo Wamala, presidente do Comitê Intergovernmental de Navegação Marítima, para a participação de Moçambique neste, neste fórum. Reconhecemos grandemente a importância desta organização, que agora muda de nome para Moesna, que, cujo objetivo basicamente é envolver outros países uh, da região e do continente, onde, sem dúvida, Moçambique também é integrado, pois faz parte do, do país com cerca de 3 mil quilômetros de costa ao longo do Oceano Índico. E quando olhamos para os objetivos e as decisões, os passos que esta organização tem tomado, percebemos como país que visam não só uh, fortificar a organização em si, mas também visam unir o continente, tornar os países africanos e da região mais coesos no transporte marítimo, onde Moçambique, com os três principais portos que tem, nomeadamente o Porto da Beira, de Maputo e de Nacala, tem desempenhado um papel importantíssimo, não só na logística do interesse do país, mas também da região, especialmente para os países não banhados pelo Oceano Índico, como é o caso da Suazilândia, Botsuana, Malawi, Zimbábue e outros. E continuaremos a colaborar na região e no, e no, e no continente. Foi dito uh, por várias vezes que mais de 80% do, do comércio internacional é feito via mar e por navios. E esta tem sido a missão e uma das mensagens fortes trazida na Carta Africana do Transporte Marítimo. No entanto, percebemos que não só temos potencialidades no, no continente, mas também precisamos melhorar nos aspectos relacionados com a implementação da política regional marítima, a uniformização da legislação marítima, especialmente a aplicação de taxas que atualmente estão grandemente diferenciadas nos nossos portos e também nos preocupa o aumento de atos ilícitos no Oceano Índico, tais como a pirataria marítima, o tráfico de armas e drogas, terrorismo e outros desafios. Caros ministros, excelências, permitam-me dizer que Moçambique já deu passos importantíssimos para aderirmos a, a esta organização, pelo que nos próximos dias o país irá formalmente se pronunciar na sua aceitação e submissão da sua candidatura ou da sua pretensão em fazer parte de, de, desta organização agora Moesna. Termino em nome de Sua Excelência o Ministro dos Transportes e Comunicações, agradecendo as várias mensagens de condolência enviadas pelos governos africanos, especialmente pela Autoridade Marítima Keniana, a quando do acontecimento do naufrágio que tivemos no dia 7 de abril, uh, na parte norte do país, em Lunga, na província de Nampula, onde perdemos 98 concidadãos nossos. Os nossos muito agradecimentos pelas mensagens de condolência recebidas. Meu muito obrigado. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, the, the unveiling. So this is the best part. Um, allow me um, to request that we now get ready for the launch of the Maritime Organization of Eastern and Southern Northern Africa.
This will be done through a confetti launch. We will have a countdown. Graphics team, are you ready? The press, this is uh, what you probably need to cover most. Thank you. We are now no longer East Coast. We are Maritime Organization of Eastern, Southern, and Northern Africa, MOESNA. Let's have the countdown. Video. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you so much. We had planned to do a drone, but change of venue, we've had to do with what chair had to deal with in Uganda two years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, as you have heard from the speeches of the Secretary General, the chair, and a number of ministers, East Coast has been involved in bringing together over 20 countries in the Eastern, Southern, and Northern Africa region. We have developed the Regional Maritime Transport Policy, which will serve as a guide for the uh, countries to look at how to adopt a number of uh, maritime transport policies. I would kindly request the Secretary General to present the Regional Maritime Transport Policy to the Honorable Chair. Thank you so much. 